let me say at the outset that I do believe in repentance. And I do believe also in once saved, always saved. Now, if you're not willing to repent and turn from your sin, then that's evidence. That's a sign that the Lord's not speaking to you. That you just, you're just being pulled in to something else, uh, some feel-good thing that you think is good, and you, you're going to be religious. Well, if you're not willing to repent, then don't, don't count too much on the salvation that you have. The Lord's not dealing with you. As I say, I also believe in what they don't always say. Now, I view it two different ways. If, 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 you, if you struggle with sin as a saved person, then you read the Hebrews, where it says that God is your Father, and as a Father, He will chastise you, and if you do not receive chastisement, then you are not His child. You were never His child. Now, why is He chastising you? Because you're doing so good? See, that, that in itself shows that there will be issues, there will be things that you may, you may be chastised for from time to time. But let's look at Romans. Now, I, I would suggest anybody read Romans, and if you want to find out about salvation, but sometimes there's, there's some things that are a little confusing. And maybe they get, get twisted. So from here forward, I'm talking about people who are saved, who the Lord, who the Holy Spirit is in them. And then th this is, this is uh, what it means, what these verses mean. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm talking to you who are saved. Now, if you live like the devil and the Lord doesn't deal with you, then you're not his. Uh, if you are saved and you don't, you don't do right according to the Lord's word, he will deal with you, as I said in Hebrews. Okay? So, but this is, this is what these verses mean. And, and they, they show and speak of our eternal salvation. <clears throat> now, one thing we point out first, you know, chapters sometimes mess you up because they break a thought. Uh, these, these books were not written in chapter and verse. So we, we're going to look at 7 and 8 and, uh, of Romans. And uh, so let's, let's, let's forget that there's a break between 7 and 8. Now, at the very outset, Paul says to, to, to the readers, he says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Now, I, I just want to point out there that he's also, he is talking to, to people who don't know the law, but he's also talking to those who do know the law and, and what that means, especially to a lot of the Jews who try to be justified. Like in, in chapter 9, and I'll, I'll tell you this, in chapter 9 of Romans, it talks about those who, who, were, who did not seek the righteousness of God through faith, but as it were through the works of the law. And, and, that, and that's basically what it's going to, we're going to come back to here. Now, the very last chapter, the very last verse, rather, of chapter 7, which chapter 7 is, is, you know, read chapter 7. It talks about the struggle of sin. That Paul said, when, when I would do good, I end up not doing good. Uh, and the things that I, I would not do, that's what I do. And he says here, oh, verse uh, 24 and 25, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind I serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. See, there, you have no confidence. You can have no confidence in your flesh. Though I think so many people do believe that you are saved, but you also, as, as, a, as, a, as a child of God, you also have to live a certain way in order to be saved. Well, you, you're having to put some confidence in the flesh, and you cannot put confidence in the flesh. If you are a born-again child of God, you have been birthed into the family. There, there's no change in that. There's no reverse in that. You are born into the family. And God is your father. And again, look at Hebrews. Hebrews said clearly that if he is your father, he will chastise you because children do tend to be disobedient from time to time. Now, let's, let's go to chapter 8 now. Remembering, let's, don't have a, let's try not to have a break in thought. So the last verse there, he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind, I serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now, he, now of course, he wasn't saying he lived like the devil or anything, but he's just, he just talking about the nature of the flesh. Okay, now, verse 8, let's keep the thought. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, I believe so many people interpret that. They say, okay, now, now if you're not living in sin, then there's no condemnation. That's not what he's talking about. He's not getting into that. He's talking about those who have confidence in the flesh. The, the, again, he's talking to those who knew the law, who, who, were not, who were not seeking righteousness as it were by faith, but as it were works of the law. They were having confidence in their flesh. And, and through the scripture it tells us we can have no confidence in our flesh. So there's no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 
Now, I'm going to prove that to you what I just said. Go to verse 9. Now, read all these things, but go to verse 9. It says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, rather, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. See, if you have the Spirit of God in you, you are not walking in the flesh. See, isn't it, this is not talking about walking in the flesh is, rather. I said walking in the flesh is having confidence in what you do, that you are going to maintain a certain level of righteousness or sinlessness in order that you can maintain your salvation. You can have no confidence in that. Paul said that at the end of chapter 7. You know, you can have no confidence in the flesh. You can have no confidence in it. Look at verse, uh, uh, verse 11 here <clears throat> of 8. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Next verse. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors. Remember, we're debtors. We are debtors not to the flesh, live after the flesh. Now, don't forget that we're debtors. If we're debtors, and we are debtors, we're debtors to Christ Jesus. And that spirit which raised him up, which dwells in us, will raise us up also. Will quicken our mortal bodies. So, and that, that verse said, so then we're not debtors to the flesh to live after the flesh. We're not, we don't owe our salvation to our, our works, our goodness. Or lack of, well, lack of goodness is, is, is just shows the grace of God, but we have no goodness anyway. If you think that you are maintaining anything that's going to add to your salvation, then that's nonsense and you're having confidence in the flesh. That you believe the flesh, you have to maintain you, you, that someday you'll be able to say, Lord, well, I did it. You know, you gave me salvation, but I maintained it by my attitude. No, what you, how you walk in this life will be dealt with by God in another way. You are a child of God. Be dealt with on that level, not for your salvation. If you are a child of God, if you can walk like the devil, as I said, and God does nothing, then as the scripture said again in Hebrews, you are not of God. He is not your father. So that's what we that's what I wanted to point out to you here. Verse uh, verse 13, the next verse, for if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we through the spirit through mortifier put to de put to death the deeds of the body, we shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Ever Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together with him. Now, I'm, I'm not going to jump over this one verse. Up here it says, uh, which one was it here? Verse, let's go back to verse 13 again. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if you through the, the Spirit mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So you can have no confidence through the Spirit. If you try to walk, if you try to walk after the flesh, I'll look at it more time. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. If you are living, now again, I whole, whole context here, we're debtor, what? We're not debtors to the flesh. We don't owe, we don't owe anything to the flesh. You know, we don't, our salvation is not owed to something in the flesh. We're not, we're not, you know, we're not like the, the, the Judaizers who were, who were not seeking righteousness by faith or seeking it as though it were the works of the law. You know, if we live, if we live after the flesh, we will die. If we walk in that manner, again, this is, it's, see, that's where it's, it's, it can be, it's, it's so easy to get confused about these things. But if you're, if you're living after the flesh, that is, you are, tr you are trying to be justified by the flesh. Again, separate that from living for God according to his word to be a child, uh, not to be a child of God, but because you are a child of God. And we see God deals with that if you don't walk accordingly. But to be a child of God, we owe nothing to the flesh to be saved in the first place. We owe nothing and to maintain salvation. We owe nothing to the flesh. It is by the grace of God. For if we live back to the flesh, we should die. But if you, if you, through the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. No, the deeds of the body. You know, we're going to be right with God by what we do, our deeds. We're going to be right with God by what we do. You can never do that. You can never be right with God by how you, by, by how you live. You know, even if you think you have lived the best, 
you have failed. There's always sin there. And, and, and there's no, the scripture said as far as the law, it said, cursed is he who continues not in all things. See, it's not a matter of your intent if, if salvation, if, if that's part of your salvation. It's not a matter of your intent. Your intent is irrelevant if it is part of you being saved. You have to be perfect. You have to be perfect. And if, you, if you're not perfect, then according to your standard, whoever you are, no matter what, what you say or believe, if you're not perfect, if you believe, if you believe you have to maintain something to be saved, then you will never get there because God will always find something wrong. It's not, not about your intent. It's about perfection. If, if it's about the flesh, if that's what you make it about. But if you through the Spirit, the Spirit of God dwelling in you, He's, he's made you alive. And as it says in, in chapter in verse 9. If you're in the spirit, you're not walking in the flesh. If, if, if that is your condition, you are saved. If you don't walk right with God, God is your father. You have been born into the family of God. He will take care of that. Otherwise, I don't know, I don't know why he's chastising you if it's not because of the wrong that we tend to do from time to time. See, your heart is different. You, you, you may fail royally, but he'll bring you back. He'll always keep drawing you back. Oh, he does. He's in there. If you're saved, you'll always be saved. If you don't believe God's word, I wouldn't give 10 cents about your salvation in the first place. But you can, have, you can rest and have confidence in your salvation. But if, if it's about your goodness and about what you do or you don't do, then you're trying to have confidence in the flesh. It will fail you every time.